Hi everyone. I wanted to introduce you to my little journaling practice here. There are so many different ways to journal and I find it's a really healthy, lovely way of working through situations. It can be done first thing in the morning or during the quiet hours of the night if you have a broken sleep pattern and you want something to do other than just flicking through social media and stuff. Or in the evening, you can do it after the day's chores are done and there's no pressure to take it and make it pretty or show it to anyone or do it every day, just whenever feels best for you and when you have the time. Um, I find journaling can really help to deconstruct ideas and come to the best resolutions or create plans for the future and dive deep into your own thinking. You might think you already know what you're thinking. It sounds pretty straightforward, doesn't it? Of course you know what you're thinking. Your thoughts are right there at the forefront of your mind all the time. You can't ignore them, or can you? We all know we can say and do things we don't mean sometimes, or speak or act before thinking. Journaling can help us to break down what we're going through and the ways we're behaving or why we're enjoying or not enjoying something. Um, Putting these things down in whichever way you find best, whether that be writing prose or poetry or making artwork, really helps to focus in and train your brain to narrow down exactly what you want and what you don't want. It can be both the release for thoughts and emotions you might not otherwise be able to express. And it can also be a way to relive experiences and write down details so you don't forget them. Because it's weird, we think we'll remember these things, but we often forget the details. I wish so much I'd journaled and videoed more when my girls were babies. But honestly, (laughs) um, I suppose not many of us have the time or energy to journal with a baby around. So here I've started with some unbleached tissue paper just torn up and then podged onto the main page. And then I wasn't sure what to put next. So even though I've got loads of bits of writing and book pages and prints and pictures and things around and (laughs) bits from magazines and things. Oh, I've got so much rubbish lying around. Anyway, (laughs) none of those felt quite right. So I thought I'd draw a little tree <clears throat> and put that on and then I remembered my um, labradorite uh, p- print that I had so I tore some of that and put that on the side as well and a little moon painting that I did a couple of months back as well so I'm just mod podging those on at the moment it's a glossy mod podge so I'm not sure if I might be better off with a matte one really because it's um, easier to paint on the matte one, the glossy one, everything sort of slides around a bit too much. I decided to add some little hearts down the side of this page. Um, I'm painting in a uh, gouache, which is like a thick, highly pigmented version of watercolour, I guess. I decided to paint them in black because <laughs> pink and red and, you know, the usual heart colours didn't seem quite right. And then green and blue seemed a little bit too cold. Orange didn't seem right on that page either. And I quite like black because when you're mixing colours, it's just a combination of all the colours together. Um, I don't find it dark or depressing or anything like that. Um, I like it. And it reminds me of the night sky. Maybe without the stars, but you could always paint stars on top of the black. But um, yeah, that's another idea, maybe for later. 
nice thing to put in journals sometimes is um, quotes that you find around. You know, some of them just stick in your mind. I know quotes are kind of a big thing the last few years and it's become maybe a bit cheesy to use them, a bit corny, but some of them just really resonate so much. And this one just made me think of all the possibilities that are still in the world, the things that we still have to discover about our own earth, our own minds and space out there, about everything, animal behaviour. There's so much to learn in science about, as we know recently, about viruses and how they work and what impact they have on society and the impact they've had on us psychologically. There's still so much to find out. And there's so much we don't know. And a lot that we don't know how to measure as well. And I suppose that comes down to the absence of evidence sometimes because we don't know how to find that evidence. I mean, this could relate to the spiritual world as well, which we don't all believe in it. And there doesn't seem to really be a way of measuring it yet. So this absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, just kind of reminded me to keep an open mind about things. Um, not to shut down and say things like, oh, ghosts don't exist or aliens don't exist. We just don't know yet. And I really like possibilities, which is, again, why I sort of put the night sky up above there as well. I often like to add swirls and circles to things. It's quite a friendly, rounded, soft kind of shape. So I thought it'd be nice at least for an underlayer here. And it's quite organic, you know, the spirals and repeated patterns and things like that. And it started to remind me of fossils, like ammonites. Sorry I missed the um, bottom of the page off there, <laughs> off the edge of the video. I'm still only just learning so I'm not that great at setting these up yet, but we'll get there eventually. I've decided not to worry about going over previous paintwork here. Can you see at the top the spiral's been smudged by the green paint? I quite like that. I really don't mind. Um, that's the thing about journaling, you can just do layer upon layer upon layer and keep going. And I like the fact that there are sort of the ghosts of previous work underneath and you can see the layers sometimes and then not other times. Just having a quick check that that's dry over there before I start drawing on the page. If you try to draw with pencil on a wet page, it tends to kind of tear it and dig into the paper too much. So I was trying to avoid that there. I used to draw eyes all the time 
at school actually when I wasn't supposed to be drawing eyes. I think I'm not alone in that. I've since heard a lot of other people and a lot of other artists say that they also used to doodle eyes a lot. It's a really interesting subject. There's a lot going on with the eye and it's a really beautiful subject too. And everyone is different. I needed something to give it a bit of weight over that side of the page there. So I've done a few sort of stripes between the circular shapes. Later on I lighten this up again because it ends up a bit too heavy. But again another example of being able to just change things as you go along really. If you find you don't like part of it, it doesn't matter. You can just put other layers on it or change the shapes or whatever you like. Just keep going. <laughs> I'm adding a bit more definition here, again, around these stripes and things. Um, you can probably see already, which I didn't really notice at the time because I was just lost in painting, um, that it's sort of starting to look a bit too heavy. It's overpowering the other images on the page. Which, uh, if this was a proper large painting, I'd be spending a lot longer on it. and you know, standing back and looking at it and making sure it was all balanced and stuff. Um, but when you're just journaling and doodling away, it's just about having fun. It doesn't matter if you make so-called mistakes. Just, if you're having fun, keep going. Keep just making shapes if you feel like it. <laughs> and if at some point it becomes um, less enjoyable, then just take a break for a while because this is all about positivity. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll be doing more on this journal spread in the next video. We'll probably be doing another two or even three videos on this one because there are going to be so many layers on it. But yeah, click like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.